Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel Who Dads. And today go take a look at a film study. Haven't been able to do the podcast lately due to just various things going on, but figured, hey, why don't I give you a film study? And if you'd be so, so kind, share this out with your friends, your family, whoever might want to watch this, and more importantly, like the video and hit subscribe. Today we're going to take a look and focus on Taysom Hill, all of his touches, and explain why they worked and how they worked. And that's really it. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. I think it's gonna be good. Time, so let's transition on over. We'll get our epic pin out. Smiley face. We like smiley faces. So what you typically see the Saints run with Taysom Hill is quarterback power. Now, this can vary in a variety of ways. Usually what you've been seeing them do is run quarterback power to the right. Now, they've been changing that slightly. This formation is also very unique in terms of around the NFL. You'll notice that you've got two extra offensive linemen and you've got three tight ends. I mean, if you really wanted to like call this a formation, technically these extra offensive linemen are tight ends. You got five tight ends on the field. With this being an H-back, Holtz being your H-back, it's a very unique look that is run-oriented and the other team knows it. You can tell they know it by look at the box. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight-man box with safeties and everybody creeping shows you that they respect that this is a run and this is important for later on but let's clear the screen and watch how this first play develops right right all right so we're going to take the snap and we're going left here two pulls you got ruiz pulling you got holtz clearing ruiz does have get a little bit of a knockback here for ruiz but overall i think ruiz does a really good job so we'll stop it here a couple different things first and the left guard who is um Almost like they're trying to do a crackdown here. This is not Anders Pete in on this play. So you got another guy next to Hurst. He he misses. As you say, he needs to crack down. He needs to crack down because there's no duo there. He ends up just kind of blocking nobody. But your pull here and holds here are your leads. The main thing you need is at the end you need Trotman to crack down and seal. And if you can get that, then you can have your pulls make plays happen. So you got that, and now you got big men on little man right here. And then you've got outside. So you've got the numbers game. And then your free flower is the safety. This is a third down trying to get a short yardage. So Reese gets a little bit of a knockback. Good job by the linebacker, by the way. Attacks that inside uh, angle on Reese, Knocks him back. But Reese does a good job to recover. Get out in front. And that little bit of shove and that little bit of attack on that outside gives Hill all that he needs to get the four-yard game for a first down. That's the first play. Now let's go take a look at the next play. So here's another good one. This is the next time we see Taysom Hill. So the second play, you can already see the look is completely different, even from a personnel standpoint. So we've got AK down here in the slot with Callaway, and we're showing almost like we've got this little swing screen that we're trying to set up. You've got to fear this if you're the Seattle Seahawks. So how do they react? Well, they are dropping into coverage. Can actually give you a little bit of a, a quarters or cover six look here pre-snap but check the box one two three four five man box you will take that as the saints and this is the threat of what the pass can give you now i do not believe that every team in the nfl is going to fear this as much as seattle they are a bad team but when you start showing parity with Taysom hill you can have more effectiveness with Taysom. so after the snap in shotgun you can see him have the look over first thing you do show the look that little half second is enough to make sure this guy and this guy hold because we don't want extra defenders coming. Now, I do love the free release from the tight end to reach the second level, and we're pulling with Anders Pete to clear. This should, on paper, be a numbers game you win. And what happens? You do a pretty good job. Now, Al Wood, especially early in this game, was doing really well against the Saints, particularly against McCoy. But the play design is what's important here because we've been used to seeing QB power, QB sweep, and that was it. It was basically all QB power, QB sweep to the right side over and over and over again throughout the season. We're seeing a little bit of difference in variance here where they aren't running RPOs, but they are at least running run options and they're giving the look. So you've got Al Woods right over McCoy and Ruiz tries to come in and he just sheds both of them, by the way. So this isn't an opportunity to like just hate on Ruiz. McCoy, one of the better centers in the league, but we'll just watch Al Woods completely wash him. Like, powerful left hand. We talk about angry, violent hands in scouting. We talk about our player evaluation. We're scouting. We're talking about violent hands. That's a violent hand. Just took McCoy one shot, shoved him out the way, and then does the same thing there. But you see the initial run in the lane is there. 
good blocking. And this again shows variance. So you're changing it up. If you're Pete Carmichael, you're showing varied looks and you still get a positive play, just not as positive as you would have wanted. This one only going for a couple of yards, which honestly, I felt like it had the potential to do more, but this one ends up going for, I think four yards or, or I'm sorry, three yards, nothing incredibly crazy. So we're going to move on to the next Taysom Hill play and uh, to go from there. Now, to be clear, I'm only going over to the offensive plays. He did have two really good kick returns, but just offensive plays. So this is what's known as a read option play. Again, giving variance here is a very important for the New Orleans Saints. Look at the box for Seattle. We've spread things out. We've got a two by two set. When we say two by two, we're talking about the alignment of the wide receivers. So two by two. And we're in the shotgun. This is a passing look. And what the Saints are going to run is an option play, a run option play. And the entire point is creating what's called a conflict defender. We're trying to put a particular defender in conflict, read him, and how he reacts is what we end up doing. So right now you see Seattle. I mean, everybody's fearing the run from Taysom Hill. One, two, three, four, five, six in the box. But we've also got this condensed bunch down here. We've only got a single high. They've got everybody down within about five yards to the LOS. They're fearing this. Let's watch the play full speed first, and then we'll talk about the point of a conflict defender. So giving off to AK, AK ends up getting the first down here. Read option play. You hear RPO used a lot with Taysom. The idea is read option. And what he's doing is reading over here. How is the linebacker reacting? See the eyes here not falling for it? See Taysom reading? When you're in a conflict or, or when you've got this alignment, you know that you've got numbers to one side. You've got the key block here, blocked, 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 blocked. You have this pull around, but our numbers are showing that we are not advantageous to the right side. So at that read, he either needs to hand it off or pull it back. Because he sees how they're attacking and how they're playing containment on this right side, he knows that his best chance is to sweep it with AK, trust the outside blocker and one of your best blocking wide receivers in Callaway, and trust him to get the edge to get the first down. Again, run option plays is variance. This is allowing Taysom Hill to be more than just the QB power, QB sweep guy, which forces defenses to respect him. And that's exactly what you got here. Hand off, there we go. This goes back to the numbers game. Remember, linebackers now behind because we were staying inside on a uh, on Taysom. All the numbers are all over here. Everybody's scraping to that right side. Nobody coming out here. We're going to be able to get a first down. Now, it's not a monster play. Great closing speed by 56, but you get the first down. And that's exactly what you're trying to get here. Let's move on to the next play. You can see varied, varied looks here. Running read options, running left, running with power left, running with out of the shotgun, we're seeing Taysom Hill being used in a variety of ways, making it very difficult to key in on what he's needing to be defended against. So this example for me is one of the ways that Carmichael is finally getting it with Taysom Hill. And, and I've said, I believe Taysom as a playmaker needs 10 touches a day on offense. But look at the pre-snap movement because you do not see this look very often. This is a pure pass set. This is a Three by two, empty backfield. Three by two. So if you're a defense, you're worried about a multitude of things because you've seen, for example, Taysom Hill run four verts. So let's do a four verts call out. Let's do four verts X shallow cross. So four verts X shallow cross would be, there's your vert right here. His marker is, here, let me redraw it a little bit prettier for you. Four verticals simply mean four verticals down the field. So your alignment, no matter where you're at, whether you're at a plus two, plus four, your markers are about the same. So you're outside, who's AK? His marker is the outside. So he's running a go route deep. Same thing with Callaway. His marker is the inside toward the hash, go route. Then we've got down here, same idea. Hash mark, go route, and then down below, go route with the numbers. Now the X shallow cross would be your Jawan Johnson here, shallow cross underneath. So this is a five receiver route, full field read. You as the defense have got to respect that. And you'll see why a little bit later on. But we also know Taysom Hill can kill you as a runner. But what happens? One, two, three, four, five, six in the box with a man moving out. Let's watch all the pre-snap movement by this defense. Look at that. They spread it out. By the time you get what we're about to play call, they're trying to line. What do we do? They end up with a six-man box with... Taysom Hill in the gun. 
They provide the penetration, then boom, let it go. Rush, great job by McCoy here. Fantastic job by McCoy to reach the second level. 15 yard run. So this was a design run the entire way. It's basically kind of like a halfback draw, but simply from the quarterback position. But if you look at the receivers in terms of what they could threaten, now they're not running that for a vertical concept. What they're doing is like a little bubble screen down here at the bottom, showing a little bubble screen, showing a little receiver screen down here. That's not the point. The point is as a defense, you have to respect the threat of what this opens up. You've got to spread out and you've got to play that. Now they are naturally playing a little bit more shallow, but look at the depth of even the linebacker compared to some of the last plays we were at. We talked about what previously, we had like nine people within five yards. Watch at the point of this snap where everybody's at. See that drop back, just that little bit of drop back into a zone. We're now seven yards deep. This guy, we got to respect the fact that this was like a screen play. We've got to respect it. We're respecting the screen. We're respecting the screen. So what ends up happening is you got Taysom Hill to be one guy and a blocker releasing to come get that guy. This is very good play design by Pete Carmichael. And once again, we're getting varied looks, and finding a way to get him in the space. Great job by reading the block there by Taysom Hill. Let's go take a look at the next one. All right, so this is going to be Taysom Hill's first TD run. And I want to show you how Carmichael is using motion and different looks. And even though we've got similarities here, I want to show you why it's effective. So again, you're going to have a stack box. And this is pretty common in a goal line situation if you want to count them. we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Safety drop down can kind of count it as an eight here, but you've also got this one here on the end from that nickel spot. So very condensed box. What are you going to do first? Motion out. What's that motion do? That motion drags this guy out the play because you got to respect Alvin Kamara. Now, you, you've got to respect AK. So why is that important from a numbers game? Look at the blocking along the offensive line. We're pulling to the right and we're blocking down. So now I'm going to get the end zone angle and we'll talk about why this is important. We want to move that one guy and it has a purpose. So once we're going to move this guy with the swing, we're going to see a lot of guys blocking down as we pull. So everybody blocks down and now this linebacker's out. Why does that matter? Back it up one more time. I want to draw it on the screen. Backside guys who free flow can always be dangerous in these type of runs. So right here. So we're blocking down, blocking down, blocking down, blocking down, pulling around, lead block pull. And now this has drug our free guy. So now it's a numbers game again. Remember, we always want to play the numbers game here. Why is this important? Well, if we take out all the line and we take in two blockers, what does that mean? We've got a hat on a corner. We know corners can't tackle very well. We've got a hat that should probably end up on that linebacker. And now we've got a safety to beat. If you're a quarterback, safety being right here, by the way. If you're a quarterback like Taysom Hill, you expect to win this matchup. So let's watch. Boom. What do we end up getting? Exactly as we expected. Now, sadly, you lost a little bit on that D-line. But your one-on-one -on -one still stayed the same. You still end up with a one-on-one, -on -one, just not the one-on-one -on -one you wanted. Taysom does a great job to cut back and then it becomes a touchdown. But the idea was all there. Ramchek ends up uh, losing a little bit. And credit to this Seattle defensive line who has some great plays. Actually, it looks like there was a bit of a uh, foot getting stepped on situation causes Ram to lose his footing, which kind of ruins part of it. Great job to clear the linebacker, which is what the plan was with Anders Pete. And then Taysom just doing a great job to avoid that D lineman for a touchdown. But again, we're talking design elements here. We're using simple things like motion, because look, once we got rid of that free backer, see this right here? Even with this cutback, even if we had tried to go through the plan, see how that free linebacker who would have been right here would have been really important? Well, he's not there anymore. He's gone. He's completely out of the picture because we drove him out with Alvin Kamara. So we had Ramchek get his foot stepped on. Okay, well now a D lineman has to try to out-athlete Taysom Hill. That's a tough one. Even if you didn't, you've got a one-on-one -on -one with a safety undersized compared to Taysom Hill. This is playing the numbers game, and this is the type of thing that Pete Carmichael is much better at this game than he was to start the season. So let's take a look at another play. All right, next up on the list, again, we're changing the look, same style, and we're changing the side. I love the motion here, and I'm going to explain why, but you're in a three-by-one set, meaning three-by-one, which means the defense is naturally heavy over here. And... Um, giving a little bit of a cover zero look, which we'll talk about while that's important too. Remember, Taysom Hill, we fear him as a runner, not necessarily as a passer so much. 
foreshadowing. So how are we gonna do this? Well, the basic play design is pretty simple. Lead blocker, down block by everybody out here, free run to the end zone. But you do motion first to make sure you get the defensive position that you want them to be in. That's what Pete Carmichael does here with Chris Olave. So naturally you'd be like, well, this shift is bad. We just made the entire group shift over to this side. It is bad, but why do we show that movement? One, when we do this motion, pre-snap motion, helps the quarterback determine zone versus man coverage, which even though this isn't a pass, it is good to know because if a linebacker is going to drop into a zone, well, that tells you where they're going to be when it comes to a run defense play. But we're going to put Olave back. Now, why is it important that we put Olave in motion here? Putting Olave in motion sells a screen game, and we know that he's dangerous in space. Or a pitch game, dangerous in space. That little bit holds all these people. All these people got to read, how's that play working? Now, the Saints know where it's going. Defense, you know, oftentimes is a reactionary step. So now you've got Hurst, who I think has done a much better job than I expected, especially in some of these games. Hits him. Now you got one-on-one. -on -one. You got hat on hat right now, everybody. Hat on hat is how you like to play football, especially in the run game. Great block by Washington coming. Great job by Hurst. That little bit of a lob, a froze. Look at this. You got three guys within three yards of each other as a defense. You hate to see this. But that's because we sold the swing. We had to respect it because you had the blockers on the outside. And because you played so close down to the LOS because you were worried about the run, now you opened yourself to a run on the outside. Easy peasy move into the end zone. This is not to take away from Taysom Hill, but good play design by Pete Carmichael to open up this type of play. Now this one, we're getting in the second half, and now it's almost like where you want to reset your tendencies. And this is the look that everybody's familiar with with Taysom Hill. Everybody's seen this type of power run. We're going to just jam power. We're going to pull our guard. We're going to try to drive down and get yards. Everybody's used to this. You want to continue to show that look though. This is the look. You want to make people think this is your main tendency. As long as you get a positive, any, any four or five yard gain is a huge positive here. Let's look at the blocking. We're just going to run that power to the right side. All right, what do we do? We cut block on the back side. Yes, it's legal, even though I hate it. We are down blocking with the duo here on the nose tech. Ram checks one on one. We've got our extra lineman. We're blocking here. We're pulling and we're pulling. The numbers are our thing as long as we can clear out the bodies. Now, the bodies, great read by the linebacker to scrape across. Good job by Pete to move well in traffic and then an upfield battle gets you a very tough five yards. This is the traditional look. Many people go, well, hey, this is predictable. Sometimes predictable is okay as long as it's a net positive. It's not always about the big 15 yard gain. You want to show this look because you want people to fear the fact that the Saints can just load up with people down the line and run it down your throat for five yards at a time. If you can pull this off, you're going to be a successful football team. Love the key down there. Good snatch, by the way. One of the rare McCoy, just really good wins there. But um, yeah, good play. This is what you're looking for. I know this is a quick one. Let's keep moving. Back at it again with variance this time. Back in the gun. Now we've changed the personnel a little bit. You are technically in a three by two, but you've got your tight end here being a little bit closer. Three set here. Once again, you got to fear that potential. Eventually, you got to call these type of screens though. Like you actually have to throw them or teams are going to start ignoring them. But single high by Seattle. They got the call. We're going to pull again. We're going to run. Big play. Great blocking on the outside. You're going to get a first down on second. Now, let's look at it from the end zone angle. But we're giving the variance. Variance is not always passing the ball. Variance is how you're aligning. And right now, look at this. Block down, block down, block down, block down, pull. I mean, this is just straight power football block out but look at the numbers one two three four five six seven but it's all spaced out we've got all this space here because well, at this point you don't know what you're doing like if you're seattle how do we defend against this we don't know what exactly they're doing you show that quick almost look of hesitation part of that is timing to try to make sure that you're allowing your blocks to develop that half step you take is taste them is letting that block develop Great job by Ruiz here, by the way. Ruiz with a beautiful block. And then, bam, we got one guy to beat, and we beat him. This is just Taysom Hill being a better athlete than a lot of different people. There's reasons your team's leading Russia right now. But look at this just attack down by Ruiz. Like, sir, you've been playing like a dog all year. And I'm going to say in this video, Ruiz might be your best offensive lineman in 20, 
22 right now. Like, he is playing out of his daggum mind. Anders Pete with a fantastic pull. Great job. First down. We'll keep talking about more of these. All right, my theme of the day, varied looks. Now, I want you to take a look at this alignment. We are showing all that power. Like, look at this. We've got our extra off, our extra tight ends, everything down on the line. We've got our blocking tight end here. We've got Alvin Kamara one-on-one. If you're a defense, the alignment alone pre-snap is really confusing on what you need to do and what you're really looking for here. So we're in the gun. We're going to motion over. Well, that says power run. What do we end up doing? First time of the day, we pass it. So this is what I love about this because you essentially do what you, you Y leak without having a Y leak. And what makes this work is look at the eyes of the linebackers. They are all expecting. That's your main puller. Everybody freezes. Normally, you would draw back in your zones. Everybody's stuck on their feet right now. But there's your route. There's your route. There's your route. There's your route. Up the seam is going to be completely open. We will talk about your middle of the field read here in just a second. One thing to note, and this is as a quarterback, the main thing that he's got to read when he's calling this motion Notice one, the depth is real low on these safeties. But if you remember when you were in too high, the primary read as a quarterback is called MOF open. Middle of the field is open. If you have a too high set, this area of the space is an immediate target you've got to understand you go after it. Reason being is these zones, if you take the safety, is basically here and out. And this is basically here and out. You're not really splitting it down the middle. You're kind of guarding from the hash to the outside, hence the middle of the field open. A really rangy safety can maybe make up for that. But this looks like a run. This gives us the power run look. Look, we just brought three massive blockers to this right side. So we've got to respect it because they've been getting killed by it all day. But finally, it turns into a pass. And now you look, people are just kind of lost. Like, look at your flat defender not knowing what to do here. Here's your crossing pattern underneath that keeps the linebackers down. Great job in terms of play calling. You got your one-on-one -on -one here on the outside. And by the time the safeties recognize it, who were playing low, well, it's a little bit too late. Because this safety can't react because he's got three routes. Here's your route, here's your route, here's your route. It's just a great play design. And it's an easy pitch and catch for Taysom because he read middle of the field open, but he actually had multiple options. If middle of the field open had closed, and what I mean by that, if in a pre-snap uh, read, this is middle of the field open, but if post-snap, this safety and attack the middle of the field. No worry. JP Holt's going to be wide open. No worry. Juwan Johnson's going to be open. They overloaded that middle of the field look through the seams to the right side. So this is what happens when they expected run. You now have these type of plays available to you. Great play design. Utilizing the pass every now and then is going to keep that defense guessing. They just don't know what to do. Let's move on to the next one. So this one's one of the few ones that probably wasn't super effective. It's very similar to what we saw in the uh, end zone or the red zone earlier. This time it's Traquan Smith. We're going to fake that screen. But this time they don't really respect the screen. This time they're like, yeah, it's Taysom Hill. We're figuring it out. We're starting to get to buy in. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They keep everybody down into the box. They don't really buy into the screen. You can even see the corners here on the outside not paying attention, safety not paying attention, which means if you're doing film study, as uh, Pete Carmichael, that means now, as I said a couple of clips ago, we got to start respecting the screen at some point because now they're not. You have one-on-one -on -one blocking. McCoy is just not able to maintain his block and doesn't really go anywhere. But this is going to be the important thing to remember if you're in the offensive coordinator for the Saints is great job on that pass. But when you start showing the same look, you've already showed this look and you already ran from it. You've got to start passing from it as well. This time, just not able to have the same level of success. But variance, variance, variance. It's not a negative play, so we'll keep moving to the next. All right, so this is one of my favorites. We're back in that power, but now what look are we giving? For those who've been watching this whole time, you can probably register it. Again, we're showing full block. Everybody's down at the line. Old school football. Well, what are they expecting? Here's Juwan Johnson. Here's our extra offensive lineman. Here's JP Holtz, our main guy. We are given that same look that we have given for weeks that we are about to run QB power down your throat to the right side. And look at the alignment. Even the middle linebacker is right over the nose. So they're expecting it that way. And they are bringing everybody down, man. They're going to crash down because they're expecting the same look. This is why variance is important. So at the snap, look at how the linebackers react. They finally see the pull, but it's too late. Everybody's too far back. We're all the way over here. We're all the way over here. This linebacker is the only one with the shot. Watch the clear happen, though, man. This is a beautiful play. 
Ruiz, great job. Holtz, great job. And that's what happens when you kind of play up close because you believe that you're going to have a, an advantage to stop the run. Well, if you get to the second level, it's hard to stop. Let's look at it from the end zone angle. You get that same idea. This was the backbreaker for him. But look at their alignment. So they're going to slide. Brooks, is uh, he wasn't over the nose. He's, he, he's a little bit over here in the one, which is fine. But all your linebackers are shaded heavy to this side. You've got your nickel corner here right off screen. And you're just going to block down, block down, block down. We're going to pull. We're going to pull. But the look we gave is we're doing this to what's called the weak side. So if you remember, everybody's heard strong side, weak side. Strong side is naturally the side that you have the most blockers, hence the name strong side. Usually we run QB power to the strong side. And if you look here, we are QB power to the strong. So one, two, there's your extra there. Three, that's your strong. Because you've got your two over here, but we are loaded to the right. That's our strong side. But this time we're going power to the weak. They weren't expecting it. They've got everybody loaded over here. And if you even look at the shifts, they are wanting to, they believe that's coming down there. And it just cleared out. Good patient running by Taysom and away we go. So the greatest thing, the great thing that you see if you're a Saints fan is all the different level of parity here from Pete Carmichael. The way that he changed things up, even using the same plays, but finally changing the tendencies and how they were run, showing more success. And I've got to give a lot of credit to that offensive line who's been playing better and better every week. And I will take these one-on-ones where Taysom Hill has to outrun an arm tackle from a safety all day long. That was the backbreaker. That was the one that killed it. That was the one that ended it. And that is your film study for the day. The various looks, whether we're in QB power, QB sweep, showing these four by four vertical sets, showing these screens. Eventually, you got to toss them in. Andy Dalton thought it had a really good day when you're using these 10 up to 15 plays of Taysom Hill and using it in an effective way like we saw today. That's how this team can be successful. And that's how this team can bring home the big W's. Hope you enjoyed the video. Who that? God bless. Like it if you still like it. Support it by subscribing. Deuces, that's me. Catch you on the next one.